by way of like a special life update, uh, I'm going to lead into a major complaint and then turn it into like a call for action. So welcome to Theory Underground. I'm David McCarricker and the life update is things are going really good. I'm happier than I've ever been. I'm more well established than I've ever been. I'm less insecure uh, financially and in terms of housing than I've ever been. Um, and uh, we just broke like 9,000 subscribers here at Theory Underground. So, you know, great job, everybody. Uh, and thank you for all the serious engagement. Um, I never really imagined that anyone would give a shit about like this kind of long form content outside of a real small handful of people. And I guess in the grand scheme of things, this is a small handful of people, but to have like 20 people viewing most of the time while we're doing a reading of chapter one and volume one of Das Kapital, which is like the driest thing ever, driest thing ever. The fact that we had that many people just speaks to something. I'm not exactly sure what. I'm going to leave that to you to figure out all I want to show you and all I care about right now. And what I'm thinking about, though, is this podcast I started a few months ago. I did one episode and then I have several people lined up for interviews and those just have not happened yet. Okay, well. Um, they will be. I'm doing one of those interviews today. And I went to check out the channel. And this is the thing I'm frustrated about. I can't find it. I can't find it on YouTube. Right? Look, Theory Underground is not meant to be just a podcast or a YouTube or something like that. Like, that is not the point. It is its own platform in a sort of sense, right? It is its own organic network. It is its own vision. It's its own, um, systematic approach to things to various fields and it's also like a introductory course site to a million threads that are absolutely essential for weaving together any kind of an understanding of the situation that we are in today that that's what i feel good about that's what i feel proud about and that's uh where it's at you know in barely over a year's time we we're already at that point where i'm i'm like yes this is really good obviously there's like 10 years that have built up to that but no, as far as Serial Underground goes, it's all new, feels great. And the thing is, is the the platforms that we have to go out onto in order to actually reach people, right? Like having to go out onto Instagram, having to go out onto uh, Twitter or TikTok or Facebook or any of these other things. It's like, that sucks to have to run the socials for something like this. Like I try not to be on there too much, right? Instagram is probably my favorite because it's, I don't know. It's just pictures. So it's a little bit better, right? Um, but YouTube should be one of the best platforms and it really could be, but instead it has only gotten worse and worse and worse. I would move to Rumble. I would move to Vimeo. I would move to some alternative if I thought that there was like a feasible alternative. We're just not there yet. And for the time being, this is where people are. And TikTok, by the way. I mean, don't even get me started with TikTok. Don't even get me started with like Twitch. Like those are the two most like ADHD cultivating, hyper intensifying distraction, you know, exploitation platforms in the world. You know, like YouTube actually, mm, there's something special about the fact that a person can hop into a live stream and then go back to the beginning of it. And there's an expectation that it will be there on demand later. Like, yeah, you can set that stuff up on Twitch, but also it's not the expectation. It's not the default setting. It's not like what people are kind of primed to expect. So YouTube is currently the best. But when I try to look up my podcast, Amazon's uh, Workers of Amazon, look what happens. So let's just go up here to the top, type in Workers of Amazon. What do we get? Nothing. Nothing that it should be coming up here. Look at this. So. So many Amazon workers are getting hurt. You're just disposable. Former Amazon workers speak out. This is what it's like to work at Amazon. So we definitely get negative stuff about Amazon, right? Like the standard liberal fare to progressive critique of Amazon. Horrendous conditions revealed, right? Like this kind of like, oh, Bezos is the worst thing in the world. Like, I mean, he's not great, but he's also 
not uh, Voldemort like they try to act like he is. It's kind of silly, actually. Um, the the degree of fetishization that happens when people are like anti So, um, yeah. So I mainly say that hoping that some billionaire will give me money. But look, if I click the filter button right here and I type in or I click the type channel, which is something you can do in case you didn't know, watch what happens. It still doesn't come up. Workers of Amazon is the name of the channel. It's also the name of my podcast. It doesn't come up. And then you scroll down. There's all of these other things. Amazon workers, Amazon unpacked, action on Amazon, workers essential, support Alabama Amazon workers, workers strike back. Just go down the line. It gets really, really niche. Really look at random rats. Just kidding. 18 subscribers comes up. Before workers of Amazon, check this out. Amazon BRS2, two subscribers, comes up before workers of Amazon. So you can't say that it's getting buried because it's like negative stuff about a corporation. No, because obviously a lot of very negative stuff about the corporation is coming up in the top of the search results. That's first. Oh, of course, I guess, you know, look at that. It's mainstream. It's CNN. It's the NBC. So that's probably why I'll just hear. Yeah, you get all these. Uh, Victory for Amazon. Bernie, it's the Bernie channel. OK, but where's my channel? Right. Just a little tiny DIY channel by an actual Amazon worker. Where is it? Well, I don't expect major changes from YouTube anytime soon. Um, I hope that we will see some, uh, but I'm not getting my hopes up. You know what I mean? And so in the meantime, what I hope that you could all do is just go to my channel here you go, and go down to the bottom of it on the first page, right? The home page. And you see this fellow travelers bar. It's got Nance and OG Rose and philosophy portal and me channel and the vanishing mediators. Shout out to all these wonderful people. Todd McGowan, Samuel Long Car, dangerous, maybe Brian Becker. All right. And dangerous maybe would be first, except that this channel is inactive. So. Uh, yeah, you do see workers of Amazon down here, 17 subscribers, which is a whole lot more subscribers than some of the channels that do come up when people search for my shit. So go ahead and click that. Please click the subscribe button. There's only one episode. We're not going to put out a lot of episodes. I'm not just talking to anybody. I'm talking to the people who I take to be the most interesting, uh, employees there. The ones that I've talked to who I'm like, I really want to sit down and have a conversation with you. And so the one that I had here with Juan is amazing. And it's, I think, not something that uh, most people would expect. We're not just sitting here complaining about the work conditions. We're actually talking about him, how in some ways this is the easiest and best job we've ever had. And I think that that just speaks to the fact that most other jobs suck too. And, uh, you know, because Amazon is so big, in some ways it has to be better because of litigation culture. Right? right? That's not the same thing as saying it's awesome. But it's also not the same thing as saying it's the worst. And so um, there's that. But there's also the fact that we're talking about the Goggins mindset versus family nurture time. A really important lesson that came out of Juan's, you know, lived experience as a working father. All right. So with all of that said, I'm about to go do another interview, one that is for workers of Amazon. And I'm really stoked for you all to uh, to check it out. Peace. Here, I'm going to actually just roll the uh, PSA at the end of this. Why not? Why not? We cannot do direct revolution, but the only way to lay the foundation for it is to do what you are doing to move the underground. It's a theoretically correct title. Welcome to Theory Underground, a place for workers with earbuds who are tired of the bullshit and just want to get down to it. Big ideas, rigorous thinking, and ultimately, liberation from necessity. Research at Theory Underground focuses on what is most important for understanding our current situation. Theory of the subject, capital, time energy theory, critical media theory, CMT, and the most essential critiques necessary for understanding why the theory, ideology, and common sense of influencers left to right 
misses the mark. Theory Underground is coming to a city near you. Besides a commitment to publishing certain underground theorists and popularizing certain fundamental concepts, we have toured the United States and are touring Europe to promote our ideas, courses, and publications. You've been reading Underground Theory. Amazing book. I'm a publisher and an editor. I run a review of books. Literally, it's my living. This is the best edited collection I've ever read. Okay, picture this scene. America, early 2021. An Amazon warehouse worker arises from the emerging underground theory internet scene to create spaces for untimely topics and concerns that are too often neglected or kept in isolation today. Joined by a revolving cast of underground theorists, academics, and critics, he establishes what will become Theory Underground, a teaching, research, and publishing platform by and for working class intellectuals, autodidacts, and academics who want to do more than they're able to do within the confines of academia. That warehouse worker's name is David McCarricker, and his book Time Energy is his first major contribution to the world of theory. It was recently reprinted with a foreword by none other than Slavoj Žižek, who also contributed to Theory Underground's latest book. Uh, uh, uh. My Bible, it's an excellent book. A collection of essays called Underground Theory. What you just heard is an excerpt from the Strange Exiles podcast, episode 23, where Bram from Strange Exiles interviewed me and Mikey. For those who don't know, Mikey is the author of the Dangerous Maybe blog. We are publishing one of his books here shortly at Theory Underground. He's also a lecturer at Theory Underground, and he's someone I've been friends and a collaborator with for over 10 years. But most importantly for you all, he's a fantastic lecturer, and it's a crime that he has to do wage labor right now. One of the long-term goals of Theory Underground has been now for a couple of years to hashtag free Mikey. That is something that I've been really pushing. But first, obviously, I have to get freed myself. So the two of us are able to do this because, you know, as Mikey said, build it and they will come. Well, I tried and I built a website and platform. Uh, I had my own app and everything, but it's been really buggy and uh, it's more than one person can handle. And that's, you know what, a really good lesson for me. And so for now, what we're doing is moving it to a temporary intermediary platform until we are able to get some more serious funding. And ultimately, we want to be in a place like this, a real brick and mortar digital nomadic mecca where people can come from all over the world. But also the app was really expensive. And so by quitting it, I am now able to save a lot of money and with the help of my patrons and the students at Theory Underground, especially the monthly subscribers, I am officially able to quit Amazon and do Theory Underground full time. So thank you so much, everybody. This is one huge step forward. My way of giving back to everybody is by promoting everyone who is at a current tier to the benefits of the tier above them as far as subscribers go, and also rolling out a new lower tier. And so check out the tier subscription setup. And if you're not interested in taking the courses or what's being offered for subscribers and you want to support anyway, check out the Patreon. Finally, just stay tuned for more information on the tour in Europe during the month of May 2024 and the conference in Mexico during the last weekend of October 2024. If you want to be there, hit me up ASAP. Let's get talking because it's happening very soon. All right. Bye-bye.